Well, thank you and welcome to our webcast on best practices for integrating Power BI within PWA Project Web App. My name is Scott Clausen with PPM Works, and I have another hopefully informative, short, and productive webcast for you. Thanks for joining. So my background, if I haven't had a chance to meet you yet, I've been working with the Microsoft PPM solution for over 20 years, really going back to the, some of the original on-premise solutions for Project Central. Of course, Microsoft Project has been around even longer than that. And my main role is working hands-on with customers, helping them configure new Project Online environments, migrate up to Project Online, extend Project Online through reports, integrations, custom features, and I hope I get a chance to work with you soon. So PPM Works is a Microsoft Gold Certified Partner. Uh, the Microsoft Project Portfolio Management or PPM solution is the only solution we support and use. Um, lots of great organizations out there across different verticals, pharma, biosciences, high tech, um, government sector, IT, et cetera. We really provide a whole host of services, whether it's gonna be project-related training, um, professional services to help you get started with Project Online, migrate to Project Online, or any specialized solutions or support. So some of the learning objectives for today, we'll help you understand some of the basic requirements for Power BI reports in the Project Web App, how to incorporate Power BI reports into Project Web App. Hope you've had a chance to, of course, work with Power BI, and this isn't your first introduction to it. One of the things you may be asking is how can I bring those reports kind of closer to the user, and that's what we'll be covering today. Along the way, I'll give you some best practices, tips, and tricks, and then some a little more detailed considerations for getting Power BI onto your project sites. So kind of the basis for what I'm going to be covering today is on a Microsoft Docs article that I have the link here. And by the way, at the end of the presentation, I'll give you our email if you'd like a copy of this presentation, no problem. So there's two uh, main requirements for using this. One is that your users are going to be able, uh, will need to be licensed for Power BI. Um, typically that's a Power BI professional license. That's going to give them the ability to view these Power BI reports online. An alternative to that is having a Power BI premium capacity in your organization. Second requirement is that you want to use the Power BI web parts for SharePoint Online. And these uh, web parts are only available in what's called a modern page. And if that's not something you work with, I'm going to be able to show you how to use those here today. Um, this information, kind of the basis for this comes from a Microsoft Docs article that I have the URL here, and I will be able to send you this presentation at the end. I'll provide an email for that. So there's about five or six steps here to bring these dashboards onto your sites. Um, the first one is an important one here. You're going to want to activate something called the Site Pages feature on your Project Web App site. And I'm going to show the slide here and then kind of walk you through this. But you're essentially going to go to the settings gear, choose site settings, under site actions, click site features, scroll down and activate this site pages feature. Let's see what that looks like. So here would be your typical project web app site. I'm going to click on my settings menu here, choose site settings. This takes me to my SharePoint site settings. I'm going to click under site actions, manage site features. And then you're going to run a scroll all the way down the page to where you find site pages and make sure that that's active. If it's not active, there'll be a button here to activate and just takes a few seconds. So that was step one. After you've done step one, you'll be able to go to a library on your Project Web App site, and that library is called Site Pages, so we can click and create a new site page. So to find my Site Pages library, I'm going to again start with that Settings menu and go to Site Contents. 
I'm going to scroll through my list of different libraries. There's hopefully a new one that will be added to your site after step one. And now we're going to click Site Pages. And notice how this library has kind of a different icon logo. That's for um, modern pages. And when you first come here, and I've already created one modern page, but this will generally be empty the first time you come. And to create a new, what's called modern site page, all you do is click the site page button. So wait just a moment for that to create. And there, there we have it. I've created a new modern site page. And it looks quite different than other site pages if you haven't seen those before. And the first thing you want to do is give your site page a name. Let's we'll actually go back to the presentation. So I want to do things like enter a page name. Um, kind of a tip here is on the page layout, you want to choose a layout called plain. I'll show you that in a moment. Um, then we're going to add the Power BI web part. And then another tip here at the bottom, you can choose to remove the comments if that's not something you want to use. Let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to give my page a name. I'm going to call it Project Online Dashboard or dashboards. So that was step one. Um, notice if you come over here and you click edit on this kind of header web part, that's going to open up the title area here, the title area web part. And um, you know the default layout here has kind of a graphical background and typically when I want to put a Power BI report on one of these pages, I want to kind of minimize this header. So I like to use the plain layout and watch what happens when I choose that. It'll kind of shrink that up a little bit. Um, and that's about all I do there. Um, there's different options, of course, if you want to display more information on your page, but typically what you want to do is kind of follow this to keep this as simple as possible. Next, we're going to click this little plus here to add a new web part to our page. And when you scroll through these web parts, these may be different than the web parts you're used to. These are the modern page web parts. So there's kind of a different set for modern pages. And it happens to be this Power BI one that we want to select here is only available for modern pages. So I'm going to choose that, Power BI. It's going to put the web part on the page for me. Um, and then the last step here I mentioned, you kind of um, scroll down. Actually, we'll do this later ability to, uh, I think it's available after we save our page, hide or show comments. So step four now, we're actually going to transition over to Power BI and get something called the embed link from Power BI so we can configure that into our web part. So you want to go ahead and launch Power BI and um, you're going to choose either a report that you've already published or um, in this example I'm going to show how you can use the project online content pack. And if you don't have the either a report or the project online um, contact pack, you want to click get more apps from Microsoft App Source. And you can actually search um, the different apps. Uh, I could search for project online. And I can find that project online content pack and add that into my environment. So I've done that already. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and click on this project online content pack. Um, so this is the first dashboard view, but what we're actually going to do is click, you know, into one of these so we get into a actual report page. So I have my report up now. I want to go to the file menu and choose embed in SharePoint online. And then below that has a description, get a link to securely embed this report in a SharePoint page. The link's displayed there. I'm just going to hit control C on my keyboard to copy it and close. 
And those are essentially the steps for getting the embed link from Power BI. So the next step we want to do is configure the Power BI web part. So we're going to return to our site page, our modern site page. We're going to go into the web part settings, or actually we, in this case we can just hit add report. We're going to paste that link and we're going to set some of the parameters around the report. So I'm back to my new modern page. I click add report. Um, up here it's going to give me an area where I'm going to paste that link. So right from my clipboard, I'm going to hit control V and give it just a moment to refresh. There it goes. Now, if you're not familiar with this Project Online Content Pack, it has about a dozen different pages or tabs you see along the bottom. Um, here they all are. So you can actually choose what is the default page or tab that appears. And let's just keep this simple and start with the portfolio dashboard. Next setting is the display. And typically, I think the default is 16 by nine. That's gonna give you a little bit of a wider display. If your report has been des designed for another aspect ratio, like four by three, uh, you can choose that. But I, I typically just keep the default 16 by nine. Um, next option here is to show the navigation pane. That is really the ability for users to select different report pages. Uh, so in, unless you wanted them just to have one report page on this, um, you would turn that off. I'm gonna keep it on. And lastly, um, just to show you functionality, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the filter pane, which is gonna give users the ability to filter. All right, so at this point, I've set up my web part, so I'm gonna go ahead and save my page as a draft. All right, and let's see the next step. So we've set it up, we've set up our navigation, we set up our filters. Um, so we're really ready to now publish this site page. And if you haven't worked with modern site pages yet, real simple, uh, up here on the right, you hit publish. And the first time you create this page, it's gonna give you these options to promote your page. Um, if, if you happen to click close and you wanna see this again, actually here on the ribbon, you can click promote. Um, so there's a couple options, of course, could email it or post it on a new site. Um, now, notice I'm gonna choose this add page to navigation, and that's gonna put my page over here on the SharePoint navigation. However, um, you know, in working with project web app, you know that the navigation here in SharePoint doesn't match what you see in the project web app. So a lot of times what you wanna do is actually copy this address. And I'm gonna go back now to my Project Web App. And I'm gonna click Edit Links. I'm gonna click New Link. And I'm gonna put my title of my dashboard here. I'm gonna paste that link that I got from the last screen. And what this is gonna do, save and close, it's gonna give me a link to my modern site page right on my project web app menu. Of course, you could move this into a different area that you'd like. And when users click that, it'll take them right to the published modern page you created with the dashboard. waiting just a moment for it to load here. All right, here it comes. So, a couple of things to note here. Uh, one earlier you saw me choose that option to allow the navigation. So that specifically is the ability for users now to move across these different pages if they'd like. 
Um, of course, the other option I chose is for users to have this filter option so that they'll be able to access your report filters if they like. And if you didn't want those things, you of course could turn them off. Um, now by default, these pages have an area here for comments. Uh, it's a nice feature, but you know, if you wanted to kind of simplify this and um, not have comments, after you've published, you go back in to edit your page and you'll see at the bottom then after you've published, you have the ability to turn those comments on or off. So maybe uh, just to clean this up a bit, I'll turn my comments off and then publish again. So there we have it. Just to review kind of the last steps we did, we clicked the publish button. Um, we chose the option to add it to the SharePoint navigation. We also copied the URL so we could add it to our project web app navigation. So after kind of seeing this, you might be asking yourself, well, okay, this is great. Scott, you showed me how to bring a Power BI report onto my project web app site. But what about down at my project sites? So in general, you would actually follow the same process for bringing dashboards onto your project sites. Um, you would go first into the site settings of that site. You would turn on the site pages feature. You would add the dashboard into a, well, sorry, add a site, a modern site page, add the web part, add the link to the web part. And all that could actually be saved into your template. Now, one of the common questions we get is, well, how could I actually show a project specific report on my site and unfortunately the Power BI web part at this time doesn't allow anything like a filter parameter to allow you to easily filter to a specific project. Um, so really the workaround we've used uh, and I just, I'll just share the article here for you is you can use URL filters. Now those wouldn't be maybe an embedded report on the site but you can pr put a link to them. So essentially users go to their project site they might click a link to their project report um, and then that would open their project specific report in Power BI. So not really a great option for project specific embedding on the sites right now, but you never know with Power BI that tends to change quickly and we're hoping the feature comes soon. So that was it, kind of short and sweet how you'll work with Power BI in your project sites. Um, wanted to let you know now we have a lot of stuff coming down the line in March and April. Um, we have a spring demo series, um, so we have not only this event, but we have uh, coming up March 26th, we have, actually let me start with March 21st, Project Site Customizations Made Easy, March 26th, The Keys to Effective Resource Management, April 2nd, Getting Your Data-Driven Decisions Within Teams collaboration and reporting. And lastly, um, on April 9th in Burlingame, Massachusetts, we have a PPM Brunch and Learn. So again, my name is Scott Clausen. Feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn if you'd like to get a copy of this presentation. Our email address is info at ppmworks.com. We're also available to come on site and give you a free Microsoft sponsored PPM workshop. So let us know if you'd be interested in that. Thanks and have a fantastic day.